Today is something a little different. I'll be discussing TRS 2019 performance settings, including a little known Windows setting and the profile utility supplied by N3V in TRS 2019. And I'll measure how my performance settings work in Jointed Rails Coal Country Route, the rail fanning session. So let's get into it. I'm going to start with a little known window setting which in many cases can maximise the performance of TRS 2019. So move down to the Windows icon on the Start menu and select the little wheel cog showing settings. In the Windows settings screen that shows up, select System. Then select the first item labelled Display. Scroll down to the bottom and you'll see a blue lettering saying Graphics Settings. They will present to you the Graphics Performance Preference. If you've never done this before, you should choose the Browse button Navigate to the folder where your name is located and select the relevant .exe file. In my case, I've already selected two. TS2019, 64-bit from Dovetail, which is a new version of Railworks, and TRS2019, EXE file, you'll notice they're both set to high performance. So I'll highlight TRS2019 by clicking the Options tab. There you will notice there are three options. The System Default, which is exactly where every program is set to when it's installed and in most cases that's all you need. The second setting power saving is most relevant to battery powered laptops and similar devices. The third option, high performance, is what we're interested in trying with TRS 2019. I originally used this for Dovetail's Train Simulator 2019 64-bit, which was performing even worse than the old 32-bit version. By changing it from default to high performance, it transformed this train simulator as far as graphics clarity is concerned. So I thought I'd try the same on TRS2019. Even though I have a high powered machine with an i7 processor, 64 gigabytes of RAM, a GTX 1080 Ti graphics card with 11 gigabytes, and SSD disks for all the files related to TRS2019. The frame rate was erratic to say the least and just this one simple click changing it to high performance has transformed the frame rate to be a lot more consistent and even a little bit higher. Now I must add a final warning here, I'm not sure this would be of much value on a low powered machine, but mid-range systems may still benefit, all I can suggest is give it a try. And remember to restart your simulator to get the best result. Another not so well known utility is the profile utility on the developer tab of the Start TRS 2019 window, Launcher. And while it has many features, one in particular at least, is relevant to measuring performance of TRS 2019 with regard to frame rates. When you first hit the desktop icon for TRS 2019 and the Launcher window pops up, you'll notice the third menu item along the top is Developer. In the drop down menu of developer contains two menu items related to the profiler, one being show profiler and the second the clear profiler. If you select show profiler a new screen will show up which contains a lot of information but most importantly on the top line is the word render with a frame rate just to the right of that. How do we use this profiler utility to measure performance? The main one for starters is the frames per second. Profiler is a separate window on your systems, so it does not necessarily appear on the simulator screen, particularly if you have another screen to put it on. However, in this following example, I am putting it on top of the sim window, but note that every time you click on that sim window, it will disappear. So while it's the most accurate frame count of a TRS 2019, some of the in-screen counters can be more convenient, if a little less accurate. However, I have more than one screen. So I'll just move it in and out as required for this example. In this first measure, the frame rate is quite high, 
but this could be because there's little light to render. You can see it's nearly 60 frames per second. Once we come out of the tunnel and there is a small increase in light, it starts to drop. The closer I get to the rising sun, the lower the FPS will go. And lower. Until it reaches an equilibrium around 40 to 45 frames per second. And that's one way to measure how well your sim settings are working. I won't go into all the other data on the profiler at this time, mainly because I don't know what they mean yet. Another day perhaps, eh? Finally, here's my version of the settings window. I'm not going to go through the settings one by one. Firstly, I imagine most of you are comfortable with what the settings are, and there are several well-detailed videos on YouTube covering what the settings can do. And secondly, because I have a high-end machine and not everyone else does, it may not be relevant. So what I'm doing is showing you what I have for my system. Hopefully that helps. There are several ways to do this. One, use the like button. It's a simple way to have your voice heard and may give me a general impression. Or, there is an even more useful way. That is to use the comment section below this video to be more specific with your opinions. My main reason for doing these tutorials is to help all train simulator fans, be they trains, dovetail train sim world and a number of other train simulators out there. So to help you watch this space as I listen and learn from your feedback, please consider subscribing to my channel and ring the bell on the right side. That way you'll always get a notice when I upload something new. And don't forget the various train simulator forums. That's another way to link with the community. And is why the various train sim communities are so great. In the meantime, I hope I can catch up with you next time I upload one of these tutorials. Okay, that's it from me for now. So hooroo from down under.